Russian military man Yegor Guzenko, call sign 13th, said that the Russian army is facing a shell shortage. According to him, after Ukraine destroyed Russian ammunition depots in Toropets and Tikhoretsk, the Russian army introduced daily limits on shells. Ukrainian journalist and blogger Denis Kazansky published a video of his statement on his Telegram channel. Guzenko admitted that the shortage of shells is felt not locally but also in different parts of the front. At the same time, it is impossible to conduct competent and prepared assault operations with such a quantity of shells. According to the occupier, he does not see the work of Russian weapons factories citing the destruction of large ammunition arsenals of the Russian army. Ukrainian strikes on ammunition depots in Russia may affect the battlefield as early as October, says Estonian intelligence. This was stated on Friday by Lieutenant Colonel Yannick Kesselman, Deputy Commander of the Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center, as reported by ERR. Kesselman noted that the recent decrease in the intensity of attacks by Russian forces. Last week, an average of 226 strikes per day were recorded, while this week the number dropped to 155, he pointed out. The Estonian intelligence representative stated that this decline is not yet a consequence of Ukraine's attacks deep into Russian territory last week, particularly the destruction of ammunition depots, referring to the strike on the missile storage in Toropets, Tver region. The results of this attack will likely be visible in two to three weeks, Kesselman believes. Since the Russian Federation has lost a significant number of munitions intended for the front line, it will likely have to prioritize its operations in the coming months, he said. Kesselman added that, given this situation, it remains unclear whether the Russian army has the resources to push back Ukrainian units in the Kursk region. On the night of September the 18th, drones from the SSU it remains unclear whether the Russian army has the resources to push back Ukrainian units in the Kursk region. On the night of September the 18th, drones from the SSU, Main Intelligence Directorate and Special Operations Forces destroyed a large storage facility of the Main Rocket and Artillery Directorate of the Russian Ministry of Defense in the settlement of Toropets, Tver region. The depot stored missiles intended for operational tactical missile systems Iskander, tactical missile systems, Tochka-U, guided aerial bombs, and artillery ammunition. Russian specialists will carefully study the design of the German tank Leopard 2. The captured vehicle was delivered to Ural Wagenzavod for a thorough examination. This was reported by the corporation's press service. A German Leopard 2A6, taken as a trophy in one of the areas of the Special Operations Zone, was delivered to Ural Wagen Zavod, where Russian specialists will work on it. This tank is in a very normal condition. Apparently, it was abandoned by the crew due to some kind of breakdown and was not hit. In any case, it is now in Nizhny Tagil. As reported by Ural Wagen Zavod, the German delivered to the plant has already been put on jacks and disassembly has begun. Based on the results of studying the tank's design, an expert assessment will be issued as well as recommendations for the military. No time frame has been announced. Specialists from the Ural Wagen Zavod concern have begun to dissect the Leopard's units, systems and assemblies. After conducting research and analyzing the results, an expert assessment will be given of the actual military technical level of the various systems and the captured vehicle as a whole, the press service of Ural Wagen Zavod said in a statement. As noted, this is the first German tank that fell into our hands in almost working order. Before that, all captured vehicles arrived with various damages. It seems that soon, Ural Wagen Zavod specialists will get both the American Abrams and the British Challenger too. At the start of the full-scale invasion, Russia was estimated to have around 3,300 operational tanks, suggesting that all those that initially drove into Ukraine and then some have been taken out over the course of two and a half years. It's impossible to know for certain exactly how many tanks Russia has lost during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, so any figures need to be treated as estimates. An assessment for British defense intelligence earlier this year said Russia had likely lost 2,600 tanks since the start of the full-scale invasion and 4,900 IFVs, a total of 7,500. Figures from the open-source investigative project Oryx put the number of tanks damaged or destroyed at 3,180. As Oryx only publishes visually confirmed data taken from open sources, the real numbers of Russian losses are likely significantly higher.